when what was the situation and you kind of do explain it in the book but um in in 2018 i guess it was um i mean that's like the big year everything happens in 2018 and kind of explain like you know the between you know i mean how did tony khan first approach you guys and then at what point were you you know i mean did you take it seriously because at first everyone's going to go yeah right you know what i mean i mean even even with the right. you know the money behind him and everything i mean you know i've heard i don't know dozens i don't want to say 50 but two dozen easily situations like this and mm -hmm. you know like maybe one of them actually came you know a few came close one which was the carters actually happened and the rest just kind of like disappeared pretty quickly or never were anything and um you know and tony's uh, i will say this um he is completely different from every single one of those people and the one thing that was so interesting about him was his like the rest of them were kind of like ah oh, the wrestling looks like a way we can make some money and tony was was so much a wrestling fan at a level that like like he's this the um this another like super fan but also a, a super fan who understood business and numbers and things like that it was so weird for me when i first met him not weird but just his his knowledge and how quick he was and like just things he would say out of the blue of like oh yeah this reminds me of something and it's like dude that's like before you were born and it's like yeah yeah but i watched the tape of it you know what i mean exactly Sorry. You know what's Man. funny is just like you said, up uh, Matt. Let me say this real yeah, quick, and then you you could end it. Uh, just like what you said, though, like we've heard this story before. So when we were first contacted from him, I I know sold it. I said, ah, I've I've heard this story before. I'm, I'm not going to take the call. And Matt was the one to uh, to take it serious and set up a call right away. And I I even told Matt, like, what are you talking about, Matt? We've We've heard this so many times. Don't waste your time. We have like tons of offers on the table right now. And Matt, thank thank God, he didn't listen to me and he kept talking to him. And after like three or four calls, then I was like, okay, maybe this thing is uh, something that we should look into. It, it, I think if you could, you could probably learn in the story. Like I, I'm always maybe the more optimistic and Nick's the pessimist of the two. And I've got, you know, I, I'm always open-minded and maybe Nick isn't as open-minded. So, you know, I, 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 uh, I heard from Tony through a mutual friend, um, you know, a, another fellow wrestling fan. And, and he said, Hey, you know, I, I'm friends with this guy and he's really serious about talking to you. And he wouldn't really tell me about what, cause I don't even know if he knew about what he just knew, he, you know, Tony wanted to talk to me on the phone. And we were in between trips or something. And we, this is when we were, like, on a crazy schedule, never home. So I get the email, and I, 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 I receive Tony's number, and I, I send Tony a text. And I let him know, hey, you know, I would love to chat with you. I'm kind of busy right now, but let's set something up. And I went, and I remember I set my phone down. I jumped in the pool with my kids, and we were just kind of enjoying the day. And and immediately he, I come back and he's blowing my phone up and he's like trying, he's already called me once. <laughs> and I'm just like, Whoa, you know, who is this guy? Uh, so finally I tell my wife, uh, you know, Hey, this guy really wants to talk. I want to call him. And she immediately fires up on me. And she's just like, it's your day off. You're never home. Come on. I said, I said, I would like to just see what this guy, I was at this point, I was pretty interested. I just, why was this guy want to do with us? He, you know, he owns a football team or something like what? <laughs> like I just, I was really curious. And we, we, you know, she's like, okay, but I want to be in the room if we're going to, if we're going to talk to this guy. Uh, and at, at this point she's gotten pretty heavily involved. Like we had already been talking to triple H on the phone quite a bit. She'd been in the room and every, during every phone call. And, uh, she'd been heavily involved in all in. So she was really starting to you know, get into the wrestling business a little bit. I could tell, like, so she wanted to be on the phone for this one. And as soon as we pick up the phone, he's just, you know, he's the guy you were just describing, uh, Dave. He, he's, he's fast talking Tony, spitting knowledge at me and talking about all this stuff and that I forgot about. I'm like, oh, yeah, we did do that with our crew. And he, finally, <laughs> he's just, after his, he, he talked about his fandom, he finally gets into it and just says, listen, I'm looking to get into the wrestling business. And, and uh, I immediately roll my eyes. Because we, like Nick said, we've heard the story a million times, you know, and 
He says, listen, I, just Google my dad. So I said, okay, what's your dad's name? He tells me his dad's name. I Google, and it pops up as one of the, I think it was the 12th richest person on the planet. <laughs> and I go, okay. It immediately got my attention a little bit. I said, okay, well, either way, whoever this guy is, you know, his dad definitely has money. <laughs> and then he sent me a video. It was a video he texted to Dana and I, and it was a video of him sitting in the crowd at the, uh, at the Long Beach, Long, the Beach, Long Beach, right? Japan shows. Yeah, yeah, and he he's he's sitting like in the front with a leather jacket and a Bullet Club shirt. And he's got these big thick glasses on, and we actually too sweet <laughs> at the time. He's like, we've actually met before, and he shows me that, and I just I at that point I kind of like I want to say I started liking him a lot more. I was like, whoa, he's a fan. he really is a fan. Like this is cool, and uh, he got my attention. So I remember bringing up you know, this conversation I had with Kenny and Nick almost immediately. And, you know, and at the time they were very skeptic, which they should have been because I was still skeptic too. But uh, one conversation turned into two, which turned into three, which turned into, I'm talking to this guy every day at this point. And, uh, and I'm and like, we're becoming friends kind of, you know what I mean? Like I was like, Hey, whether or not this wrestling thing happens, this guy's pretty cool. He's a nice guy. <laughs> And uh, he wanted to really meet up with us and stuff. And we finally, that's when we eventually decided to meet up uh, when we were all in London. And that was the first time we, we'd ever met him. And, and I think that was the point where when we finally met him and got to see him in person, interact with him and have a conversation with him, I think that's when we really fell in love with the guy. And we started really seeing, like, this is a major possibility. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio... We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.